Let's go over to that loser's bracket. We've brought you so much action from the winner's side. It's time to take a peek over to the other side of things. Shifting over, Sethlon versus HTX Wispy. Now, Wispy sent to this loser's bracket by Phenom, but on his way here, he took he, he took it down Denti. He took down Lightning Cam. Just a monster, honestly, whenever he was on the uh, on the winner's side. Yeah. And for Sethlon, I can see this being pretty tough, seeing as someone who's beaten uh, beaten Sethlon pretty consistently in these past couple of weeks has been Lightning Cam. So I'm not sure if it's just a Lightning Cam thing or if it's a Diddy thing, but things uh, are already looking a little bit rough for him as Sethlon is already starting to fight at a bit of a deficit. What I've noticed about Sethlon as a player is that he has grown so much since he started using Roy in this game. He, being a smart player already, being a Roy fanatic, has knows how to space himself well enough to where his disjoints can triumph over any other character's options. Um, I feel like he's finally gotten over a lot of those hills that he was climbing at the beginning of his uh, journey to learn Roy in Smash 4. And I'm really excited to see how he's utilizing that. And I think his Diddy matchup uh, lack of knowledge could be gone at this point. Well, he's definitely been putting that time in the lab. He's another person like Lightning Cam who has been practicing with Dakpo. Let's see if he can maybe make his teacher proud. This is what he needs to do above everything else. And this is one reason why I think Wispy has, has come out on top in this first stock controlling the stage and forcing Wispy into the corner. If we look at the majority, if we had to go and look at like a percentage of who ha was in the corner or off stage, most of the times it was Cephalon. Yeah. And it was never Cephalon really controlling the stage aside from a couple of rare instances here and there. So that's what I want to see from Cephalon going into this next stock, but Wispy isn't even giving him a chance to breathe. Oh F-Smash collides 60%. I don't even know how much charge was on that thing. <laughs> I love how he just, he, he found himself in a position where Sethon could have done one of two options. Sethon could roll or shield. So what he accounted for was the roll. But however, Sethon coming in, also accounting for options on ledge, that neutral B being so strong as a kill option, also having barely any lag. So he's able to utilize it almost fundamentally in uh, standard gameplay. Exactly, especially when he has someone on the corner, you'll expect him to use that neutral B. And a lot of times it won't hit, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is to cover an option more than anything else. Wispy now understands that he can't necessarily do that normal get -up. And he might go for a different option, but the beauty of being able to act out of a move like that so quickly is you cover one option and then you can cover another one and react and cover immediately. Putting up that shield, avoiding that F smash that time. Cephalon still has quite the mountain to climb. Wispy has taken out so many heavy hitters from DFW. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes out another one here. But he has to find himself out of the corner. This is exactly where Cephalon wants him, and it's exactly where Cephalon took a stock last time. Right, Cephalon at those incredibly high raise percents right now. A lot of setups out of uh, soft hitting moves aren't going to work. Um, what he's going to need is a really well-placed smash attack a really good read. And this is what's kind of hard for Roy. Roy doesn't really have any setups when he's in a situation like this. However, Diddy still has a, anything out of his banana. And even at these low percents, uh, possibly the down tilt still. Ooh, that. getting back thrown. This is bad. The platform is there, but whoa! Even before the Zethlock can even have a chance to think about going to the platform or even think about going to the stage, Wispy comes down and says, you're not having a second to breathe. Exactly. Very. Uh, Wispy took both of those stocks in the exact same way. He, he ran off the stage and he forwarded before... Uh, Sethlon could throw out an upbeat to recover back to the stage. And in both instances, that was only possible because Sethlon was recovering low. So, what I feel like Sethlon could do a bit better in this next game is uh, try not to put himself in a situation where he's forced to recover low, but he can recover high to where he will not die to those runoff forward errors that we were saying. Let's see the adaptations that Sethlon's going to be making in game number two. Now, going to town and city. I wonder what was crossing his mind whenever he decided up on this stage. Um, I guess since it's a, it's a fairly larger stage, it's closer to those side platforms. Possibly a really well-placed forward tilt or forward smash to still early stocks. That's what I'm thinking. Let's see if the counterpick pays off. 
as intended. The banana coming oh up, actually. My that was so clever for Wispy. <laughs> right? Wispy with the tricks, man. Right, making himself look vulnerable, only to have Seth on eaten by that banana. Perfect pivot grab is going to put him in stage event and in stage control at the moment. Uh, Seth Lawn, however, getting that jab, letting himself get back to a better neutral position. Uh, it's looking a bit better for Seth Lawn in, uh, in the start of this game, too. However, Wispy's been able to even the game back up. What I want to see Seth Lawn do is utilize the banana a bit more, like we were seeing in the uh, the Phenom versus Wispy match. Uh, Phenom did a really good job of controlling Wispy's banana and then utilizing it to set up for kill options of his own. And I feel like Seth Lawn could really use uh, that kind of option in this matchup. He has no lack of experience when it comes to dealing with the peel. It's just in different mediums of smash. It might be the lack of uh, ways to deal with the peel that might be throwing him off. But it's definitely that up smash that's going to be taking the first stock in game number two. Yeah, uh, Se Cephalon uh, playing a character like Roy who doesn't have a lot of setups since he kills at later percents. Uh, I feel really struggles against a character like Diddy, who can just run in, throw a banana, and has setups to rack up damage and kill you. I feel like such a big part of this game has been Wispy's grab game more yeah. than his banana peel game. He's just been so sneaky with some of these grabs, and he's been able to just get stuff on in the air and then get a lot of damage and or positioning off of it. Even there, the patience. He waits, baits out That's a it. counter, and he ends up taking this set 2-0 over Seth Lon. Yeah. What really came into play was, um, as you were touching on, Wispy's ability to get that grab and rack up that damage, uh, but also uh, his awareness of when Sethlon was going to throw out the up B so he could run out and he could challenge it with any of his options. And it would always put him in an advantageous position if he's able to clip uh, Sethlon. Good stuff from both.